Hello, in this video, I will explain the concept of vectors. Before we define vectors, let's consider the concept of a point. We typically understand a point as a coordinate point in the Cartesian coordinate system. This is expressed as an ordered pair that collects the value of each coordinate axis. If we want to represent a point in n dimension, we need n real numbers. In other words, a point can be thought of as a finite sequence composed of n real numbers. And a finite sequence can be understood as a rule that maps the real numbers to its ith place. The important thing is that a point has a finite number of elements and a mapping rule of finite sequence. Therefore, a point can be defined as an interface type that encapsulates finite interface and the map interface. Here, the map uses the type parameter int and real. The length function of the finite interface indicates the maximum integer value that can be input into the map method. When implementing this, if a user inputs a value greater than the number of components of the point, an error can be triggered. Similar to real interface, any two points should be distinguishable from each other, so point interface may encapsulate the element interface. Now, let's look into the concept of a vector. Like real numbers, vectors are also defined through a set of axioms. The first axiom is about the addition of two real number, two vectors, and the second is about scalar multiplication. The third axiom is related to real inner product of two vectors. Note that an inner product is not strictly necessary to define concept of a vector, but vectors in coordinate space generally have inner product, so we define it here. The inner product returns a scalar value as a real number, and it is not affected by the order of multiplication. The fourth axiom, strictly speaking, is not an axiom, but a result derived from the first and the second axioms. That is, all vectors are linear combination of other vectors. Here, E1 through En represent the basis vectors. There are infinitely many types of such basis vectors, but we will assume that they are always standard unit vectors, meaning that they are the vectors whose ith component is 1 and the rest are 0. Let's implement the concept of a vector using an interface. First, a vector is a point interface. Since it encompasses the element interface, it must have the equals method. This is because vectors are generally expressed as n tuple real numbers, similar to Cartesian coordinates. Next, vector must implement additive interface. This allows vector addition. The add method of the additive interface returns the result of adding two vectors from the color variable and the input variable. The add in method returns the vector whose components are negatives of the components of the color variable. Finally, the zero method returns the vector where all components are zero, that is the zero vector. Next, the vector must have a scale method. This method returns the scalar multiplication of the vector. And the vector must have an inner, in, inner method. This returns the result of the inner product between two vectors as a real interface type. Finally, basis returns a slice of basis vectors used to express the vector as a linear combination. This concept is used in the partitioning, which will be introduced in the next video. Now, let's create a function that calculates the distance between two points using the vector interface. Here, p and q are coordinate points. The distance between p and q is equal to the magnitude of the position vector connecting them. This magnitude is the square root of the inner product of the vector with itself. The distance function returns the length as a real interface type. Let's go through the content of this function step by step. First, use the len method to find the length of p and q and compare them. To obtain pq vector, we must have the same length for p and q. If p and q have different lengths, an error should be returned. Panic is one way to trigger an error in Go.
it prints an error message and immediately terminates the program. If the two lengths are the same, P and Q should be subtracted. Here I have subtracted Q from P. This is equivalent to adding minus Q to P, so it can be implemented this way. Note that the result of add method is of the additive interface type. Since we will use the inner method next, we must convert it back to vector interface type. This is possible only when the underlying type of P and Q implements the add method to return the value that implements the vector interface. This may be confusing at first, but it will be clear when we look at the example of actual implementation of vector. Finally, compute the inner product with itself and send its result to SQRT function, which was introduced in the previous video, to get the result. Now, let's implement this vector interface as a struct. Here, I will redefine a slice of float64 as a type called simple vector. First, simple vector must be a point interface. Therefore, it must have a method called equals. This method takes an input variable Q of type any. Any is type that means it can be anything. The first thing to do here is to check whether the underlying type of Q actually implements the point interface. If so, we can compare the length of the color variable P with Q. If the two variables have the same length, compare each element in order. If all components are the same, return true. Next, the len method returns the length of the color variable. Finally, the map method checks whether the input i is an appropriate value to the return element of the color variable using the len method. Next, simple vector must be of additive type. The add method returns the result of vector addition. For this, Q must have the functionality of the point interface because we need to reach each component of Q. The zero method returns the slide with all elements as zero as the simple vector type. The add in method returns the minus vector. Next, simple vector must have the scale, inner, and basis method. The scale method takes a real number as an input and it is of the real interface type. This is magnitude that we want to scale the color variable. Since the component of simple vector are the float64 type, we use to float to convert input variable k to float64. Next, the inner method returns the sum of product of the component in the color variable and input variable. The result is of type float64, but the methods should return it as a real interface type. Therefore, we wrap the result with the simple real type introduced in the previous video. Finally, basis returns a slice with the element of the standard unit basis in order. So far, we have examined the concept of vector and how to implement it using an interface in Go. In the next video, we will look at how to define the concept of region and how to partition them using vector interface. Thank you.